There's no doubt that Qantas, the flying kangaroo, has been an iconic Australian brand. Even the people who grumble about the service like the idea of Australia having its own airline and they're proud of Qantas' safety record. They're proud that nobody knows what country it comes from because the name means absolutely nothing to anyone else. But that pride and affection is rapidly being eaten away, mainly by Qantas's chief executive, Alan Joyce. Joyce is a remittance man from Ireland, I suppose you'd call him, and he has carried on since he arrived here like a pork chop in a synagogue. He has been appalling on every level, shutting down the airline to try and discipline the unions, making outrageous demands on public and government alike, refusing to accept that he is the one who is grossly overpaid when everybody else is struggling to make ends meet and the company is struggling to survive. And we saw evidence of just how mean and devious and tricky Joyce can be this week when on Monday Qantas issued an official press release on behalf of the company saying that the carbon tax was not actually a major problem for it, that that was not a question that the carbon tax had not caused its present difficulties. Now obviously this is not what the government wanted to hear and oddly enough Qantas was in the government's ear at that very moment for three billion dollars as an unsecured loan. It was never going to get the three billion bucks, but if it ever had any chance of getting any money at all, a brass razoo in fact, that press release kiboshed it. The Treasurer, Joe Hockey, took it into a cabinet meeting, read it to the assembled ministries. There were howls of alarm, fury and dismay. And Hockey said, well, of course, um, we won't be just going down that path. Now, Joyce, of course, wasn't about to accept this. And even if he had to accept it, he was eager to grovel, grovel shamelessly to the government to try and get something, anything, so he can maintain the lifestyle to which he has become accustomed. So, um, after a quick phone call from Hockey, the contents of which have not been um, divulged, Joyce issued another press release saying, yes, of course the carbon tax was an absolute disaster, was ruining the airline just like it was bankrupting the country, tearing the Australian way of life to pieces. Yes, of course the carbon tax was should go. Too late, mate, too late. But perhaps the silliest thing about Joyce's turnaround was his excuse for the first press release. It had, he said, been issued by a lowly employee. Sure, Alan, sure. Lone, lowly employees issue press releases on behalf of the company all the time, particularly at crisis moments when it's desperate for the government to bail it out. Sure, Alan. This is the Alan Joyce who, as I say, refuses to accept that his salary can be cut in any way at all, but is happy to retrench 5,000 employees, apparently are a number plucked out of the air to try and satisfy the government yet again, in order to maintain his own job. Labor might not have the answers, but it's certainly got one good starting point. The only job that needs to go from Qantas, said Bill Shorten, is that of Alan Joyce. Hear, hear, I say. I'm Mungo McCallum.